So, did you just get a Garmin Echo Map 73, 92, 93, 94, 106, or 126 SV? Well, if you did, I got eight things you're going to want to know. All right, guys, back at my shop. And let's hop into the first eight things. I would kind of familiarize myself if we just bought this unit. First, let's talk about the memory card slot. This right here. Most people don't even know it's there. And it can be used for two different purposes. One, you can plug in a map card. This will allow you to view high-res satellite images, aerial reference photos, ports, harbors, marinas, other points of interest, stuff like that. The other thing you can use this port for is insert a blank card and record quick draw contours mapping. So users are now able to create and share their own HD maps with one foot contour. So if your lake isn't mapped at all, you can map it yourself, right? Pretty awesome. Now keep in mind, you can record sonar as long as you have a compatible transducer. And you can transfer that data such as waypoints and routes to your computer or another chart plotter. And the beauty of this, you don't have to like send anything and wait. The results appear instantly on your compatible chart plotter screen. So pretty awesome. More importantly, these are your maps, right? You can share them if you wish. You can keep them to yourself. You own them. All right, second thing is you want to make sure you take advantage of these guys right here. These are the shortcut keys, right? You can create shortcut screens for sonar screens and charts and combos. But when you look at this unit, you're looking at your power key right here, your automatic backlight sensor right next to it, right? You get your touch screen, you get your shortcut keys um, and your micro SD slot. And they're pretty simple to set. All you got to do is go to your favorite screen setup. Let's say we would like the combo and I really like this combo number five for whatever reason. Um, I would hold down one of the shortcut keys and it would pop up a screen that says page save to shortcut key four. Okay, great. And so let's go back to any other page, hit four, boom, it's going to bring up that shortcut. So it's really nice that you can toggle through a bunch of different uh, screens. Maybe you have your FFS set up, but you want to see side view for a second. So you can just toggle back and forth between all of these screens using your shortcut keys. Let's go ahead and hop into the third thing you should know if you bought this unit, which is going to be your different charts. So we'll head over to charts up here and you have three different charts to choose from. You your fishing chart, navigation chart, and your perspective 3D charts. So let me share with you what all three of these are for. So your fishing chart, this guy right here, provides a detailed view of the bottom contours and depth soundings on the chart. This chart removes the navigational data from the chart and enhances bottom contours for really depth recognition. So this chart's really great for offshore deep sea fishing. So let's go ahead and head back. Now we have our navigation chart. This is gonna show navigation data available to you on your preloaded maps and from your supplemental maps that you use this port for, right? If available. So the data is gonna include your buoys, it's gonna include your lights, your cables, your depth soundings, your marinas, your tide stations, really from an overhead view. And so that's what the navigation chart is for. As a kayak angler, I don't use this a whole lot, mostly because I fish lakes and ponds <laughs> around me. Let's head back. Let's take a look at the third chart, the Perspective 3D chart. So Perspective 3D is going to provide a view from above and behind the boat, really according to your course. And it's going to provide a visual navigation aid, right? This is really helpful when you're navigating tricky shoals and reefs and bridges or channels. And it's beneficial when you're trying to identify entry and exit routes in an unfamiliar harbor or maybe an anchorage. So really that's what you would use Perspective 3D for. All right, let's head back home. So the fourth thing I have for you is your combo screens, right? You're able to put any combination of your charts and sonar views based on how you like the fish. So if you go over here to combo, and if you don't like any of the combos they have up, set up, you can actually go over customize and have the three setups that you like. Let's choose this one. And I want to put in this chart, fishing chart, boom. I want my sonar side view on this one. Boom, I want my sonar, let's do traditional, boom, there we go. And then if you have this set up the way you want, of course, you can use a shortcut key. But anyways, you can create your own combo screens, makes it really easy to get this dialed in just like you like it. Now let's say you come across something juicy, you just rolled over it and you're like, oh man, there's gonna be fish there and you wanna quickly create a waypoint. One of the easiest ways to create a waypoint is actually to hit the mark button right down here at the bottom of the screen. You can edit the waypoint if you want, you can name it, the depth, 
You can write a comment, hey, this thing had monster bass or whatever it was. You could put a symbol on there. These will mean different things to different people, right? Uh, this is where I can get gas from. These are one pounders, two pounders, three pounders, four pounders, five pounders, there's six pounders down there, or you caught one in there. Uh, regardless, you can really dial in that. You can delete waypoints if someone falls over. <laughs> Man overboard, and MO there. Um, you can move your waypoint a little bit later if you wanted to, and boom, and then you save it. And so that's a really easy way to create a waypoint. However, if you want to view all your waypoints, you will have to go into nav navigation info right here, and then you want to go up to waypoints, boom, and then you can kind of scroll through all the waypoints that you have saved in the past. So that's how you can view kind of all your waypoints. All right, now let's say you bought a, um, a fish finder from somebody, they have a bunch of waypoints and they don't need to live anywhere near you, right? So you can't really even use them. So you can go to nav info and say you want to delete them all and kind of reset, go to manage data. You can go to clear user data and then you can kind of delete waypoints and all. So I'm not going to do that right now, but that's how you would do it. All right, the sixth thing I want to talk to you about is the difference between tracks and routes. So if you were to head over here to navigation info, you'll see that there's tracks and that there's routes. So the difference between the two is that tracks really act like breadcrumb trails, right? They allow you to see where other individuals have traveled in the past. And so this allows you to navigate that path previously taken. So tracks contain track points, not waypoints or points of interest. So don't get these confused, however, with routes. So routes are different, right? Routes are predefined paths created from a group of location points entered into the GPS receiver in the sequence you desire to navigate them. So that's the difference between tracks and routes. You have a limited amount of waypoints. You have a limited amount of active tracks, save routes, boundaries, and you can view these from the memory over here, I believe, manage data, memory usage, and you can kind of see how many you have. Right, I, have, I can put into 5,000 waypoints. I've only used 6% of the active track memory. And so it kind of gives you an idea of how much memory you have left in case you're maxing out your system. All right, so the seventh thing I want to talk to you about is adjusting your fish alarm. The Echo, Echo Map, and Striker Series fish finders have a fish alarm, and the alarm sounds when the device detects a suspended target, right? And the alarm has three settings. All right, so we get into the fish alarm, you hit settings, alarms, then you go to sonar, and fish. Boom. There we go. So these three settings are really, they sound when any fish are detected, or they only sound when a medium or large fish is detected, or they sound only when a large fish is detected. So the nuance to this, however, is that there's no defined size of fish to report them as small, medium, or large, right? This detection is based off of the transducer's return signal strength from the target fish, right? So there are many factors that affect the return signal, including transducer installation, water conditions, fish species, you name it. So my best recommendation to use this feature is to learn the local area where the fish are found, right? And if the alarm is sounding based off fish that are smaller than desired, it's recommended to change the fish alarm to sound only when a medium or large fish is detected. So dial this in, you'll be good to go and not be super annoyed by the fish alarm going off every three seconds. Let's hop into number eight. And this is the juice here, right? The sonar. This is why you buy the unit. So let's walk through every one of these. You got your traditional sonar. This here is really using a powerful sound wave to ping objects in the water below, right? Traditional sonar translates the echoes from these waves into the images of fish, structure, and bottom depths. So you can see it on your display. I didn't buy this system for traditional sonar. Nope. This is why I bought it. So you got clear view, right? Garmin Clearview scanning sonar gives you nearly photographic images in the water below. And it's pretty awesome. And with Clearview, you can see structure, submerged objects, and fish. Traditional Garmin sonar and Clearview scanning sonar are combined into one transducer. And that's why you get this type of image. It's pretty awesome. Next, another reason I bought this unit, because it comes with Clearview and Side View. And Side View really is a technology that uses sonar to create an image of what's beneath and to the sides of the boat. It's different from traditional sonar in that it uses multiple beams of sonar to create a more detailed image. So it really gives an excellent image of what's going on off the sides of your boat here, which is pretty awesome. So you can start de detecting fish, as you see right here, and a bunch of different structure. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. Been able to find some sick fishing spots utilizing side view.
All right, next we have split frequency. Where's that at? This guy right here. I talked about that a little bit earlier. So in the, really in the split frequency, um, sonar view, the two sides of the screen show a full view graph of sonar data in different frequencies. So that's why it's called split frequency. Uh, but note the split frequency sonar requires the use of a dual frequency transducer. So if you're wondering why that's not working for you, that may be the reason. And then last, of course, but not least, you have your flasher. This guy's really interesting. Um, the flasher shows the sonar information in circular depth scale, right? It indicates what's beneath your boat. And it's organized in a ring that starts at the top and progresses clockwise. So depth is indicated by the scale inside the ring. Sonar information flashes on the ring when it's received at the depth indicated. So the colors indicate different strengths of that sonar return. So, but the real reason I bought this is for clear view and side view. And really uh, this clear view is down imaging, side view is side imaging. And the way that I kind of look at these is that down imaging, clear view, this right here is gonna give you more detail, but a smaller area. And side view, this here, going to give you a larger area but less detail. So there you have it folks. This unit does more than what I just shared but so hit that sub and I will continue to come out with more videos highlighting the other features of these units and if you ever come across your unit acting up well I got 13 reasons your fish finder is not working like it should and you can check that out right there. Thanks guys for watching. See ya.